Good morning. Welcome back. I should say good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are coming to us from around the world. Welcome back to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. This is a really special episode because we have on the very the youngest guest we've ever had on. I want to welcome Arjun Sharda. He is a founder and also the executive director of a new nonprofit called Talim. And we're going to get into it um, about why he started it and how he started it and what it does. But this is going to be a really great conversation. In the green room chatter, we were talking to Lane, weren't we, about how hard it is to do this work. And I, I mentioned to you, even a lot of adults tell me it's really hard. So um, yeah, it's really cool to have you here. And I'm just, I can't wait to get dive into this. But before we do, we want to make sure that we introduce you to our new panel of co-hosts. We are embarking on our fifth year and we have a new cohort of co-hosts that come to us from around the world, around the country, I should say. And so you're going to be meeting them over the next several weeks. Again, I'm Julia Patrick. I'm just delighted that you are here with us. And I also want to give a moment of a shout out to our amazing presenting sponsors who join us day in and day out. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy, National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that really make a difference in our world, and I hope you join them uh, along with me in thanking them. Okay, my new friend, Arjun Sharda, founder and executive director of Talim. Talim.org. Where are you coming to us from today? Ms. Patrick, I'm coming from Austin, Texas. Um, and I am Arjun Shard. It's a it's an honor to be on a, your show. Um, especially, you know, if I told myself when I was in first grade or second grade that I would be speaking on podcasts at 12, I would be like, you're I mean, I would be saying I'm lying because <laughs> I wouldn't believe that. Like, this is the honor to be on such a big show. Um, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Well, you know, um, I'm just delighted that you reached out. You wrote me a fabulous email and introduced yourself and told me a little bit about what your work is. And um, I was so excited to meet you and to really learn from you to be reminded of how hard this work is and why we we have this ability to start nonprofits in this country. It's such a unique structure and it's something that is really um, not available in other parts of the world. And so it's really a special treat for me to have you be here and share with us. So let's get into it because I have so many questions for you. First of all, Talk to me about Talim and what it means. Sure, Ms. Patrick. Talim is a nonprofit. Uh, we're registered with the IRS as well. Um, we are a nonprofit advancing education in tech, uh, leadership, entrepreneurship, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, we mainly target K-12 as well as adults. Um, we also uh, do this for the economic empowerment of the world. Mm -hmm. and help individuals, no matter if they're adults or in K-12, develop and sharpen their skills. Um, I think it's especially important in this generation that we help people who have a create, who have creativity, who have a passion, and help them empower them, like help empower them to make businesses and to do stuff at an early age, because we are called creative people. Um, when we are young, we're called creative people by adults, people we know, but how do we express that creativity? Now, that's the question that like that got me into uh, making this nonprofit as well, because in elementary and middle school, we don't have that many resources to follow a real passion or a real career. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm tired of just learning scratch or just learning basic material mm -hmm. for four years from elementary school. It's the same thing. I'm not criticizing the education system. It's great. It's built for educating kids. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's no extracurricular way for people, like especially in elementary and middle school, to start developing these skills at an early age. 
like I'm thankful that my parents have supported me to the to the point where I can make this nonprofit. But imagine the other kids. There's millions of kids around the states and even in the world, and they don't have this opportunity. And that's what I wanted to do at Salim and change this perspective. Amazing. Now, give me some background. You are homeschooled, correct? Yes, ma'am. So that allows you to have a little bit more flexibility and stretch your your curriculum towards what Talim is doing and, and allows you that, I don't want to use the word freedom, but maybe that time and that structure. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. So I attend virtual school. So I basically do assignments on a pace by pace level. Um, the reason I chose this, especially uh, when I made my nonprofit and I made my nonprofit like unofficially in September 2023 with my teachers and everything. Um, like I officially filed it on October 29th, 2023, but I actually got bullied a ton for my nonprofit. A lot of people thought it was quote unquote cringe and things like I got physically and mentally bullied for this mm -hmm. um, to the point where I had to like I had to just I didn't feel like going to physical like in-person school anymore. I just felt like it was too much stress for me um, to be doing this stuff. And so unfortunately, um, I had to move to Round Rock, um, not because of bullying, but because of uh, family reasons. Mm -hmm. And so I started to lean, I started growing to lean from there. So we were originally a chapter, a club. Uh, we were originally a school club in my school, Running Brushy Middle School. Um, before, like, before I moved, we started helping people. So we started helping them with work in tech and many different fields. And so the idea, the concepts of Talim, it comes from my interests, personally. Um, it was tech. I was, of course, I was interested in tech leadership because I admired world leaders and leadership styles. Mm -hmm. Um entrepreneurship because I want to honestly later on also make a possible startup about AI. I want to become the next AI Steve Jobs and engineering because I took an engineering class in my school and math because I personally found it interesting when I was at uh, running Brushy Middle School. And one more reason that Talim was also named that is because it's similar to the Arabic word Talim, which means education. Um, interesting. yeah, interesting. Yes, okay. Yes, ma'am. So I love, I love this, Arjun. And I, I want to get into one of the things that we talk a lot about in the nonprofit world is mission. And if you had to boil it down and you had to tell somebody very quickly, you just met them, or sometimes we say you're riding an elevator down you know, and you only have a few moments to share what it is that you want to do to change the world. Do you have a mission statement or do you have a phrase that would help explain what Talim does? I would simplify um, it in, I would simplify it in one sentence, a nonprofit helping individuals become change makers with their passion. Holy cow, fabulous. I love it. I You've got this. You know, for a lot of nonprofits, there are 1.8 million nonprofits registered in this country. That's a hard thing. Most nonprofits can't do what you just did. So I would say you're off to the races, my friend. Talk to us a little bit, and we're going to switch gears here. You, you moved to a chapter structure. Talk to us about this because I found very interesting. I found this very interesting on your website that um, this is not just for you in in your community. You're helping other kids come up with a team in their community. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Talk to us about that. Share with us what how you came up with this. Sure. So I originally thought like school clubs. They are they, there are a lot of them. And they're 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 very famous, especially in the states. There's a lot of clubs: chess club, um, Star Wars club. 
there's many clubs, yeah. but what about tech club? What about engineering club? Of course, you might see this in high school, but what about in middle and elementary schools? What about these type of places where there's a lack of these clubs? Because these clubs can serve as a resource, a beacon for people to share their passions with other people, work on projects. Who knows? Maybe this Talim chapter can help someone become the next Elon Musk or Tony Robbins. We want to be the powerhouse for that because it's especially important in in this generation, especially with AI coming up, people are becoming lazier. And I think that there's a need right now that we need to help people become change makers who are passionate about what they do. So in the chapter structure, we have various different uh, like chapters around the world. We have seven chapters in four countries at the moment. We have uh, we have them in Croatia, uh, Pakistan, India, and the states. Of course, we in the states we have one in uh, Austin and one in Somerset, New Jersey, and we are growing fast. Um, we even have plans to expand some more chapters uh, very soon. We do this to, you know, help people. We have a chapter in Croatia called the Croatian Leadership Program. It aims to teach people about politics, what's left wing, what's right wing, because these people will be the next voters of Croatia. In so, and if you don't know what Croatia it is, it's a country in Europe in the Balkans. So these type of chapters, because we need our uh, we need people, students or adults, to be educated. Because, like for example, this chapter in Croatia is helping people become educated when voting. This is something really important. It's not just about leadership. It's about many different fields, mm -hmm. and we need to help people because people aren't often knowing what they like about some topics that they want to know about, but they don't have the guide. They don't have the path. We want to pave that path for them. I love this. I think it's fascinating. Now, how many you have, you said you have seven chapters and how quickly did you do that? Because you haven't been a nonprofit very long. Has this been something that's been recent or is this just what you thought from the beginning of your structure? It's been recent, ma'am. Um, it's been since October we've grown. Okay. Um, so after moving to Ranjak, um, I started hosting the chapter in like my school virtually with my friends. And then afterwards, I started posting on these forums that, hey, we are Talim. We're this nonprofit. We want to do this. A lot of people started uh, finding about this. We even got featured in the news. Um, we started getting this recognition. A lot of people wanted to make chapters. So chapters consist of uh, one executive director, three board members, and one secretary. So that's our structure. That's the minimum to make a chapter. So aka you need three people in total. We follow, we're just like the same as Texas when making a nonprofit. We're following the same structure. Mm -hmm. Um, so you need at least three people in total, including yourself, to make a chapter. And that's how it started. So we're we have grown so fast. In fact, the chapter in Croatia, it was uh actually it was founded like just like two weeks ago. So we're growing fast. I love it. I think that's really, really exciting. Well, let's switch gears a little bit and and talk to me about what are some of your challenges? You know, um, even as an adult, there are very few places, even in the American university system, very few places where you can go and get a college education that helps you to understand about the nonprofit sector and how to manage a nonprofit and how to do the work where where are you you know finding challenges and then I want to follow that up with how are you finding solutions like where are you getting help because this is a big as we say this is a heavy lift yes ma'am um the first thing is a student and nonprofit balance um as like I'm a student by day and I am a uh, executive director by night like you have to do coursework and you also have to stay up to date with nonprofit trends you have to uh, work with your board you have to do many many things 
Um, a lot of people think it's easy, but it's really, really hard. Um, especially you have to be in compliance with many regulations, many, many different things that it it seems easy on the outside, but in the inside, it's a tough thing to do. Um, you have to you have to be the manager in the start when you're an executive director, you're managing all your operations. You slowly start getting volunteers, members. But at the start, you're filled with heavy work, recruiting, many different things, and balancing this with school. Um, that's something that I found as a challenge. Mm -hmm. And also procrastination. I mean, I admit I do procrastinate. Um, social media, YouTube shorts. I am a victim of this YouTube shorts and everything. I watch them. I watch YouTube shorts, and. It's just about finding a balance that I found is the most important. Like you're able to do anything. It's not it's not just that you're in school, you can't do anything. It's just about finding a balance in between that. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And finding ways to not procrastinate using motivation. You know, I have to tell you, um, we've done more than a thousand episodes of the nonprofit show. And truly, we have a lot of adults, people you know, even older than me, who will talk about this, who will talk about how hard it is to have a work life balance and how hard it is to, you know, get all the things done that you have to get done on your personal side, your business side, you know, it, it's, it is a lot. And um, so I give you a lot of credit for even identifying it. Because as you get older, I think it's going to get even harder as you're is your studies um, become more intense? And then also as you grow, I mean, it seems to me it's like a blessing, but it, it's also a curse that it's not just you and your community, but it has, you know, more and more people asking, um, I guess, for your time, right? And, and so I got to go to this next question. And that is, where do you see yourself in five years. So in five years, you'll be 17, right? Uh, Yes, ma'am. About 18, almost 18. Almost but... 18. So you'll be looking at college and you'll be looking at that next phase, right? Of your education. How, how does this look to you? What do you think is going to happen? I, I think it's, I have, I have one way to say it. A organization people will remember. For example, we remember American Cancer Society. I want people in schools to know about Salim, about our programs. Um, a lot of people don't know about 1.8 million uh, nonprofits, as you said, Ms. Patrick. There's a lot of nonprofits, but I want Salim to stand out. I want Salim to be something that will be able to help people so much that in schools and stuff, it would be known as a big nonprofit like we easily know American uh like nonprofit like cancer society as a nonprofit mm -hmm. it's it's really big it's widespread everybody knows about it yeah. but I want to do something similar for Tulim in the Tulim fields I love it you know um as you grow your nonprofit and as more people learn about you where do you go to get answers where do you go to get help because even as supportive as maybe your parents are or siblings, if they don't know the world of nonprofit management, where do you find that that advisor or that help when you need it? Or even if you even if you haven't needed it yet, where will you go? Do you have any ideas about that, Arjun? Uh yes, ma'am. I have two words for that. Um, one is analysis. Um for nonprofits, look at what nonprofits failed for in my industry. Who are my competitors and what have they failed at? What can I look at theirs and how do I improve from that? And second is YouTube. Now I look at podcasts too. I watch a lot and I see a lot of mistakes um, that a lot of nonprofits make and I learn from them. As a young person, as a young citizen, it's important to learn from these mistakes because we are the next generation. We are the future of America. We're going to be the next CEOs, leaders, et cetera. And it's important that we be educated enough to when we're making these type of things. Mm -hmm. I love it. Right now, as you and I chat, what type of help do you need now? 
to 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 keep marching forward with Talim? That's a great question. Honestly, I would say it's about mainly get convincing people. Marketing is really, really important. Getting people to sign up for chapters, getting people to get interested in our programs. It's it's a start. Um, you know, every nonprofit, every company faces that. The first year, you you have to find a way to appeal to your audience. How do you how do you make something that people can remember and it will last in their mind. Like they will keep thinking about it. It's that type of thing because it's really important. It's just, you're just like a company in a nonprofit. You still have to get customers. You still have to get donors. You have to get these people who will be interested in your company, who could even be longtime donors. And that's the most important thing. That's why most nonprofits don't succeed. Mm -hmm. that's I'm going to be brutally honest. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, For-profit or non-profit business, if you don't make the sale, you don't succeed. And so you're absolutely right. Um, what are you doing right now, Arjun, for fundraising? Like, what What's your strategy and um, how do you see that moving forward? Yes, ma'am. So currently we're starting with applying for grants. Um, one of the things we're trying to do is as well as sharpen our programs first. I don't think that at the moment, we need to first make it more appealing, much more easier for people to understand. Like a, like um, you need to have like a catchphrase that people will like uh, grants, pe like the people who give grants will remember because mm -hmm. at the moment, I'll be brutally honest, Talim isn't ready for this type of stuff. We still need to improve. Um, we there is it might seem like it's ready right now, but there's a lot of things that need to be improved behind the scenes. A lot of marketing, a lot of you need to improve the way that you market to people. You're marketing to customers, you're marketing to businesses as well as a nonprofit who will be possibly able to invest in your nonprofit and give you grants. Mm -hmm. And I think that we still need to improve a lot on that right now and make it more clear for people to understand. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. I think you're very, very smart to make that investment up front um, to get that going. Remember when we, we started our conversation, it's that that sense of you only have a quick elevator ride. They, they call it the elevator pitch and how when you leave the top floor and you get down to the ground floor, how have you been able to communicate what it is that your mission is and what you're doing and why somebody needs to invest in you? It's It's a challenge, but I feel like you're well on your way, Arjun, to really navigating this and understanding it. Frankly, I think you understand it a lot more than many adults that I speak with. And so this is really exciting. It's going to be fun to watch you um, and see how it goes. You know, there are going to probably be some stumbles. There'll probably be some days when it's not so easy, but you just got to keep going and keep, you know, committed to it. Um, as you said, get off those YouTube shorts and, <laughs> and make your own YouTube shorts for Talim, because that could be a great way for you to be marketing yourself, don't you think? Yes, ma'am. A lot of nonprofits, so nonprofits, like everyone has challenges. Mm -hmm. It's just about the motivation that pushes you through. What You have to remember what's your purpose in life, what you're working for. That's the most important thing that keeps me running. Yeah, I love it. I think it's really, really exciting. Um, I know this seems like a long way away for you, but do you have any desire or do you have your eye on any um, collegiate programs or, you know, parts of the country where you might want to try and get your college education or that university experience? What does that look like for you? Sure. I mean, honestly, I'm still contemplating that because four sure. years for a degree, um, a lot of depths, a lot of um, years. Um, I still am contemplating that, honestly. I'm um, not even sure because it matters more about the quality of education than the name or brand, um, which, so I'm still yet to decide on that. Yeah. I might as well because of getting a network that might be able to get more grants, more, and maybe even a startup later, but I am not sure at the moment, I would just say, because of yeah. current things like, what I'm doing right now. Well, you know what? I think it's um, it's never, it, this is my philosophy. You don't have to necessarily 
have that path laid out, but you need to be exploring, right? You need to be thinking about it so that you're open to the different things that come through, right? I mean, and that I think is the biggest um, piece of advice I could give you, not that you asked for it, but I'm offering it to you, is that, you know, being open to these things and being open to what the op what the opportunities are, right? Just like you are with, you know, uh, Talim, if, if you have a chapter that, you know, reaches out to you from Las Vegas, Nevada, and they meet the criteria, will they be successful? And can you help guide them? Right? I mean, it's, it's being open to that journey that you're well on your way um, on. Really interesting conversation. I have so enjoyed this. And we don't have much time left. Um, are there any questions that you might want to ask of me or our viewers about helping you find some solutions right now to where you are? I would just, um, I would just ask this question as a motivation source. Mm -hmm. What keeps you running as a nonprofit? Like as a nonprofit, you have to find that a lot of times we procrastinate. A lot of times we just scroll on YouTube shorts for two hours a day. I mean, it's normal. It happens to us all. It's just about what keeps us running. I, I think that I just wanted to ask your viewers that, that mm -hmm. as a source to question them and as a source of motivation. Yeah. You know, I think that's a, I, I think it's a brilliant question. And I think, um, you know, we use the phrase, what is your why? You know, why are you doing this? Why are you living the life that you live? Why are you eating the food, reading the books, watching YouTube, whatever? Why are you doing these things? And sometimes when you step back, and you ask yourself that it's hard and sometimes you you have to it changes too right throughout the course of your life you know what is your why why are you on this planet to do whatever it is and i think a lot of folks in the nonprofit sector um they dig deep and they ask themselves because you know burnout is probably one of the most uh, pressing issues that we have in our nonprofit sector. And it, it happens for a lot of reasons, but predominantly because this is a tough sector. This is a tough business, right? And so you have to do those things that um, protect your, you know, your brain and your emotions and your body um, and your spirit so that you can keep on that journey because it is not easy. But I think you're doing great. I think you're going to be, um, I don't think you're going to be one of those people that falls by the wayside because you get burnt out. It seems to me like um, you're going to have those resources to persevere and, and really achieve. This has been a delight. I have loved talking with you. Arjun Sharda, founder, executive director of Talim talim.org check out their website talim did you build that website yourself yes ma'am completely with uh react typescript and next.js awesome awesome well it's it's uh pretty robust there's some areas where you're still working on it right but yes. you can go to talim.org org t-l-e-e-m dot o-r-g and you can learn how to start your own chapter in your community you can learn about talim what what um, has driven him to start this nonprofit and to join with other students um, like himself throughout the country. It has been an honor to chat with you. You give me inspiration for my country and for my people. Thank you very much. I want to invite you back on and maybe we can do this every spring over the next, like I asked you what you're going to be doing in five years. Let's keep, let's keep in contact and see what's going on. And, um, and to follow your journey because it's really exciting. And I'm just so grateful that you reached out to the nonprofit show so that we could learn from you. I'm also super grateful for all of the presenting sponsors that we have day in and day out on the nonprofit show. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, your part-time controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Okay, you know, Arjun, we we end every episode of the Nonprofit Show with this saying, and I, I know you've watched some of our episodes. 
But I think it really is important for you to hear this too, because the message is to stay well so you can do well. I think you're doing very, very well, my friend, and I can't wait to see what's next from you. Thank you so much.